95. Yeah, he's our oldest member now. Isn't that something? Huh. Well, so there's a, maybe a few deficiencies, and these are... Um, I, maybe we can take some responsibility for it that we haven't taught well, I mean, or I haven't taught well in particular. Um, but the, the problem is, is that by saying, as we talked about like way back at the beginning, by saying, um, you know, I can be a Christian without, say, the sacrament of the altar, for example, uh, is actually to deny the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit calls you and gathers you and brings you into the church. And there, Jesus says, take and eat, take and drink. Now, when you're in a time of preparation to receive, that's different. And no one who can't receive the sacrament and dies outside of receiving it, the baptism still holds. So that's also true. But to say, I just don't want to go, or I just don't care, or I just don't need it. You're kind of saying, I'm more important than God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're putting yourself in God's place. And uh, Nicodemus is that way, which we'll hear in our uh, gospel text today. He has the same kind of issue, because I'm going to imply a little bit of something there, but I think it's helpful, and that Nicodemus comes to Jesus to talk to him about baptism because he was with the Pharisees who went out to John, who John, remember John calls them brood of vipers, because they come not wanting repentant, not to repent for the forgiveness of sins. Somehow it's still getting through. How is it still getting through? Oh, there we go. Well, yeah. There we go. Um, but, but so John came baptizing for repentance, right? And then he says, and once coming after me, who's greater than me, who's sandal I'm not worthy to, to lose, who will baptize you with water, with the Holy Spirit and with fire, referring to Pentecost eventually, right? And the giving of the Spirit of Pentecost. And Nicodemus is, comes to Jesus at night because obviously the cover of darkness, you know? So nobody knows he's going. Right, so I, I think he's coming in faith. I don't say this in the sermon, but I think he's coming in faith, um, but he's confused. He's clearly confused. Because it's like, that doesn't seem right, because I'm, I'm already okay on my own without this baptism. And right? Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Because he was a Pharisee, right. right. Whether he went to John or not, everybody was going out to John, it says, right? All of Jerusalem and the surrounding region, including the Pharisees, because John uh, re reprimands them. You brood of vipers, he says. <laughs> uh, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, right? Which is actually the prophets, but uh, that's not why they're there. So, but to that example with Nicodemus, it's one thing to be struggling or to be confused or to not quite understand or to be working through, you know, some things, uh, which is what Nicodemus is doing. But to, to have known the gift I'm just away from the breeze. Oh, yeah. And I know you love it. It's cool. good. You can close. That's right. Fine. Fine. Well, I'm gonna leave, I want to leave them open so okay, I don't forget so to open them for later. It's all right. I'll, I will close half. We will compromise. We will compromise. All right. Let it be said, Pastor does compromise. This is why we have church, church at 930, you know. Uh, or not at 9.30, but at 9, and not 8.30, not... Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, Nicodemus is struggling, but to have received the gift, and to have known the gift, and then to deny the gift is, has a different word attached to it. Because right? that, that's what Jesus calls sinning against the Holy Spirit. So now having known, this is, this is why the judgment against those who have not believed is different than those who have believed and have rejected which is one of those struggles that we have, because it's like, well, that doesn't seem fair. Well, actually, it does seem fair, right? They haven't heard. That doesn't mean they're not going to be judged for their sins, but there's, there's a, uh, this is where Dante gets the idea of the levels of hell, right? Okay. There's a special level of hell for those who have received and then deny it, right? Um, you can do it out of ignorance, too, though. I mean, I think that's another thing. And that, that's why I said maybe we've fallen a little short, and to say, uh, no, the sacrament of the altar... I mean, I think it's obvious that it's something that you receive in your mouth, right? Yeah. So you, you have, to, it is bodily. It has to be oh, in the I body. You, you can't that. receive it virtually. Yeah. So watching the celebration of the sacrament doesn't merit you mm -hmm. anything. It might help faith, but it doesn't give you the gift. You don't receive it by watching it. You receive it by receiving it. You know, that seems obvious to us maybe, but I don't think it's as, I mean, I'm finding out it's not as obvious as I thought. 
Um, and some of that's latent Roman Catholicism and their mysticism. And I think I've told you that story. Maybe I haven't here, where I was in the hospital and I asked the, the Catholic woman had me come over because it was when we had double beds, you know, in hospital rooms with a curtain <laughs> yes. back in the day. Yeah. And she, like, I heard you praying. Can you pray with me? I'm like, yeah, sure. I pray with you, which was one of the advantages to that. Um, never mind privacy. But um, so I prayed with her and I said, you know, do you know that you're saved? And he's like, yeah, I watched the mass this morning. I'm like, did the priest come to you and bring you? No, the, pri no, the priest comes around once a week or something. But um, no, I, I, they have it on TV and I can watch it. And then we can actually, they actually reserve some and it's there all day for us to observe and to pray. I'm like, so wait a minute, not eating and drinking? And you're, so, you know, there is that kind of mystical, that's part of our culture. It's in the background. Some people, I don't know if they pick it up from elsewhere, is that just by the doing of the thing, it somehow like transmutes its benefit across time and space to people who aren't even there. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the Catholics. Yeah. They seem to think that if they go to church or they do their mm -hmm. prayers, if they do them, our Father, that is good. Well, of course it's good. I mean, but... <laughs> but that makes one good with God, is how, we, yeah. how you would say it colloquially. Or we would say that that justifies. That's the theological term is for that, that. Do they believe that? Some do. Not everyone. I know Roman Catholics that trust in the you know, blood of Jesus and his forgiveness. And we'll even say, you know, and, and priests who are like, yeah, I know, what, I know what we taught at Trent, but I don't really agree with Trent anymore. And for most Roman Catholics don't agree with the document that, or the council that came after the Reformation that, re, that rejected the Reformation. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, it's not a, this is something that we have to, I think we have to learn and maybe today is a good Sunday to talk about it. Welcome. Is uh, today's oh, okay? Today's Holy Trinity Sunday, and some people misunderstand the purpose of Trinity Sunday. Well, maybe they understand it in its original purpose, but not the way that we use it. Is that the purpose of Trinity Sunday is to confess who God is? That seems obvious, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinity. Um, some people think that it's to get everybody on the same page so that we all believe the same thing, uh, which is a noble goal, but that's not our work. That's not something we can do. Um, this is what's, I think we've talked about the, I'd write it on the board, but I don't have to write on the board yet. Um, at some point I could write it on, maybe I could write it on the tablet. I don't know. I don't want to figure it out right now. Actually, I just figured it out in my head, but it doesn't matter. Um, there's kind of three categories of faith, just broadly speaking. There's what we call orthodoxy. You've heard this term, orthodoxy? I've heard it. Okay. Heterodoxy. You've heard heterodoxy before? Uh-uh. Okay. And then heresy would be the third. Heresy. Um, by the way, heresy just means to choose. So um, generally speaking, people are considered heretic, her heresy, heretical, no, yeah, heretics who have chosen to reject the faith, right? Not out of ignorance, but out of choice. It just popped through again. Do you hear that? <laughs> this control. Is he? Oh, I was wondering. He's in the church. But if I don't turn on. Specific, be like, is Ethan up there? If I don't turn on the um, the amplifier, then I forget to turn it on after we're done. Okay. And if I forget to turn it on after we're done, then I forget all sorts of things. All right. So here's a little writing pad. Is there a way to write on here? Yeah. Look at that. All right. So what do we say? There's a. Uh, Orth, ortho, oh, this is not easy. I need a pen. <laughs> Orthodox. It looks like a child's writing. All right, and then there's, I'm going to write them so we don't forget them. Heterodox, because we have to break it down. And then what was the third one? Heretic. Heretic. Uh, heresy, we'll say. All right, so ortho like orthodontic, that doesn't matter. It means right, ortho. I'm trying to think of another word that uses that, that like an orthodontic person puts your teeth in the right, or, yeah, right place. Yeah, I was say, ortho is in your mouth. Right, and, and a, a dox, we, you know the word doxology. A dox is, a, is um, to give glory or to confess, right? So to say the right, to confess rightly is what orthodox means, all right? Now there, there is a whole group of churches called the orthodox, 
So they use it, they use it as kind of a branding in the same way we have like evangelical in our name as kind of a branding because we're of the gospel. But a lot of people think of evangelical because there's a whole nother like tradition now that call themselves evangelicals that aren't Lutherans, right? And sp intentionally aren't Lutherans. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. So this is a problem with terms, right? And branding. Um, hetero, hetero, yeah, I spelled it right. Heterodox, which means um, like not the same confession, right? Because like heterosexual are like not the same sexual, male and female, right? Yeah, which actually is good there. In this case, it's a mixture of right and wrong. Oh. Yeah, and then heresy is to, uh, to say or to choose to believe something that, that is contradictory to God's word in such a way that it denies salvation in Jesus. So it's like, it's like and there's probably, there's probably a spectrum here, more or less orthodox. Um, so generally speaking, we would say, um, well, it just depends on who you ask, right? So a Lutheran would say that, I don't know, a Baptist is heterodox because they, they teach rightly about Jesus, but they get baptism wrong. Even though they're called Baptists, they get baptism wrong. Not, they don't teach what the Bible says about baptism, right? They deny infants baptism, for example. They don't think that baptism actually regenerates you, gives you new life. Yeah, maybe you didn't know that, right? Uh, we don't usually make a big deal out of it because we're, while there are divisions amongst us, generally for the sake of our, the presentation of Christians to the world, we don't emphasize our distinctions, we emphasize what we have in common, which is faith in Christ for salvation, right? Now, amongst Christians, then we do argue with each other because we want to, we want to be faithful to God's word. And there must be divisions, otherwise, what? No one's actually reading. <laughs> But when, when the, what, it's like lawyers, right? You ask 10 lawyers their opinion, you're going to get 11, or you get 11 opinions. Isn't that how the joke goes? <laughs> it's something like that. <laughs> that yeah, right. All right. And then heresy is reserved. Don't call people heretics, generally speaking. Heresy is reserved for those that the church together, so even different traditions, so Catholics, Lutherans, Baptists, just go down the list agree that that actually is not saving faith. This would include people like Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, who have some Bible, but deny Jesus as the Son of God, deny that he died for the sins of the world. Make sense? So there's kind of a spectrum here of faith, and uh, Holy Trinity Sunday is a Sunday where you know, we're trying to confess, actually, what God has said about himself, no more, no less which means that um, it gets a little tedious, actually, at places, with the Athanasian Creed in particular, because we'll say he's this, this, but he's not this, this. He's this, this, he's not this, you know, and then you're like, and at the end you're like, the whole thing incomprehensible, which is a joke. <laughs> it's actually, so that, you know the Athanasian Creed? No, you probably don't know, but you know, Barb knows it, right? I like the idea that we would do it four times a year. I just keep forgetting to actually schedule it. Um, why four? Because, because why one if you can't do it, you know? If you can do it four times quarterly. Well, right. It's one of the three ecumenical creeds. And again, a creed is just, we're looking at the, we're looking at the Apostles' Creed. What, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, and it's not as like, oh, it's so long. Because it's really, it's like um, two minutes longer. Today with the responsive, is a good, I like that way. Yeah, as far as a learning tool, it, it yeah, breaks it up and it kind of says this one says that, but it's not this. Correct. This one says that. But Correct. It's not this. And it, it, it Correct. Makes it more real. I think so. I mean, I don't know. You can do it either way. There is something to be said for just having your ears open um, and just having someone read it to you as well. Uh, but as a we have some folks that have young, or work with young children or have young children. Uh, attention span for such a thing. Yeah, it's, it says this. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, the Holy Spirit incomprehensible. And then the joke from uh, Dorothy Sayers, who was an author, um, is now deceased. She said, the whole thing incomprehensible, <laughs> which is kind of a joke. But to quote it. Yeah. So, so the, the you're, we're going to stream, but we're not streaming, which I mentioned before. 
Um, we're going to, I'm going to replay the video later in the day. I'm playing with people's psychology a little bit. Not, well, think about it this way. If the big game's on, right? Um, we'll just say the Packers are playing, right? And uh, would you rather watch it live or will you tape it and just watch it later if you miss the game? Now, if you're a diehard fan, if you really want to see the game, you will watch the replay even if you know the score, yeah. right? But if you're, if you're just a casual observer or whatever, if you miss it live, you're not going to watch it. Because especially if you see the, the score and you're like, well, I already know who won. It doesn't really matter. See what I mean? So I'm going to play with that psychology a little bit and see how it goes. Is that there are some people who want to be here in person, but just have found opportunity not to be because they can just watch online. Um, and there are people who do still need it. How long and for them, do this? Yeah, we'll see. Okay. See how much grumping we get. Okay. So there we go. Mm hmm. Yep. Right. Well, because yeah, you'll still be able to watch it just later in the day when I get around to posting it. Well, that's like your um, congregation prayer. Yeah, it's live, but you can watch it later. And I used to always watch it in the evening. Right. Right. Now that one, that is not an in-person gathering, so I don't feel like compelled. And it, this is be largely because of the sacrament. But it's like you're, you're actually by not coming, you can't receive Christ's body and blood, which is. Right. So, we are actually talking about the third article of the Creed today. If you don't get like emails or texts from, from, just give me your contact and we'll put you in the system. But you should get that stuff. You should have been in there already. I sent an email yesterday and a text message, but if your contact info is not up to date with the church, then you didn't get it. Um, that's not on you necessarily. What I should do is when you start class, I should give you a form to fill out that gives us your information. But Okay. Regardless, you're all here. You're all here and we have limited time. So the point was, when we were talking about like the Athanasian Creed, or we're talking about um, receiving the Lord's Supper, we're talking about like why have the Holy Trinity Sunday and try to confess what God's word says, is because God has revealed himself to us and he's told us who he is. The, the challenge is, um, is that no one believes it, actually, apart from the giving of the Holy Spirit, which is what the third article is about. Now, originally, we should talk about it. Hopefully, that's big enough you can see it. Eventually, it'll be really big. Mike patched the wall yesterday, it looks like, so we're getting closer. Well, there's a letter there that looks like we might be painting. Oh, that's right. Oh, he was patching. Yeah, there were holes there from the old... When I got here, we had one of those big, like, TVs with tubes and things. And the, and the flat panel. They were both here for some reason. I'm not sure. Like, why do you... Well, that one had a TV VCR in it, maybe? I don't know. Yes. Fancy. Right, fancy. I believe, originally the, the Apostles' Creed ended, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Per period. Amen. All right. So that was the earliest version of, um, well, now I'm speaking actually about the Nicene Creed in that case. Later on, the Nicene Creed, maybe having read or discovered some of those pastors getting the, the Apostles' Creed from the church in Rome, said, we need to be a little bit more specific about who the Holy Spirit is and what he does. Actually, more specifically, what he does. What he does. Because if we don't define what he does, then what will happen? People will invent all sorts of things for the Spirit to do. Because why else confess the Spirit unless there's some point, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And that had, that had been happening. Um, and some of those things still stick around today. So people speak in like angelic tongues, right? This is when they speak the gibberish. You know about this? Pentecostals. They need an interpreter. Uh, which is a misunderstanding of what's going on in the book of Acts. So that would be one example of something where it's like, well, the Holy Spirit hasn't promised that you can speak in the tongue of angels. And what is the tongue of angels anyway? Because angels come speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ. Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. Which, and it's like, well, wait a minute. So that's the tongue of angels, right? <laughs> Glory to God on high and peace on earth amongst those with whom he's pleased. Okay. When we talked about before, wasn't it that they were speaking in other languages? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, exactly, Pentecost. Speaking in the people's languages of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
which is what angels always do. They always come speaking the mess, the word from God. And in the New Testament, it's always good news. All right. What church believes that you can speak in tongues when you want to? It's, well, it's not want to. It has to it's a supernatural gift. Uh, I said Pentecostal. Um, sometimes they're called apostolic. So. Because I knew someone mm-hmm. quite well. Okay. Who said, yes, she can speak in tongues. Yeah. Right, but if you confess Jesus as Lord to others, you are an angel working on, you know, sent on behalf of God to do that. I mean, that's what angels, angel just means messenger. Well, that's the real question. What's the point of talking in some kind of... Whatever the tongues are... Unless it is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? What would be the point otherwise? Yeah. No, this is the point. And who would they speak to? To one another. It's a way of... Yeah. I mean, every, every church, congregation, church body, confession, are looking for ways to say, we're the right ones and you're the wrong ones. <laughs> right? So... Does your church, do you speak in tongues? Well, then, are you really the real church? You see? Because we do it like the apostles did. Yeah. And then we disagree with what they mean, but whatever. You understand. It, it, and this is, it's tribalism, I guess is the easy way to say it. And every, every um, actually, every faith has this problem, too. So, like, there's tribes within, like, Islam, right? You know, there's the Sudi, Sufis and the... I can't remember all of the different. They're they're kind of ethnic, but they're all they're really confessional distinctions. This came out with like the Iraq War, because the Northerns were the Sufis. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's the different caliphates. And ISIS are just the really extreme ones. So there's extreme and less extreme. Whatever. Okay. It's true. There are there are distinctions. Not every Muslim actually even believes the same thing, even though they all have the same Quran. Same thing with Christians, right? We have the same Bible, but we don't believe the same thing that it says. All right. That's not good. The Holy Spirit doesn't actually want that. He's working towards faith, but, or unity, I should say, but it's unity of faith so that we share the same confession, not because we've kind of manipulated each other into like lowest common denominator. We're just going to set aside our differences and just agree to disagree, which some of the more liberal churches have done, um, even ones that call themselves Lutheran. They're like, well, yeah, you know, we, we, have, we have a Presbyterian pastor in our Lutheran church. And you're like, well, wait a minute that we don't actually believe exactly, you know, the same thing. And you're like, yeah, well, we just decide to kind of ignore our differences. Fair enough. But um, that's, not how this, that's not how the Spirit actually brings unity, by setting aside differences. It's actually by conversation and trying to, to find consensus as to what the Bible says. And we don't actually believe that that's possible by our own strength or reason or ability. The only way that you can be brought to faith is... I, well, here we'll just say it. I believe I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. So you could shorten that up if you want. I believe that I cannot believe, <laughs> which is a kind of an awkward thing to say, isn't it? All right, but you can only say that if you're in faith, actually, that apart from the Holy Spirit working, I would not believe in Jesus Christ. The whole thing is, it, it, it's kind of hard to say because if you've been a Christian for a while, you're just like, how could I say that it doesn't make sense? But when you, you have to kind of step out of your own shoes, faith shoes, if you like, and say, now wait a minute, one man dying for the sins of the world, that doesn't actually make sense. What makes sense is that I would have to suffer and die for my sins and pay the penalty price so that I can make God happy with me because that's the way the world works, Right? You do wrong. That's you pay a penalty. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, well, this is the law. It's the yeah, law written into the Yeah, it's Santa Claus. It's Santa Claus. You do right, you get a present. Except everybody gets presents. Everybody gets a trophy with Santa Claus for some reason. We should get back to the original Santa Claus where he gave coal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you, you've all been bad boys and girls. Be a fun gag, wouldn't it? Just to do it once, and traumatize them for the rest of their life. That year, Pastor gave us all lumps of coal. <laughs> and that's like Santa Claus. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I should just give coal to coal. There's that's a good idea. Ooh. 
he get it. All right. Um, so by reason or strength is the key there. So reason, meaning like I could argue in, you into faith with good, like good arguments. And there's a place for making arguments about like, what does the Bible say? And is the Bible like reliable? Is it actually historic? You know, do the things in the Bible actually happen? These sorts of things. There's a place for that. Um, it generally comes along. <laughs> we almost always comes alongside to build people up who are already Christian because then after they become a Christian, then the attacks come to say, well, why do you believe this? Because, you know, this was written whenever, or, you know, it was made up and it was a big conspiracy or something like that. There's people that will do this. All right. Um, reason or strength. So it's like, well, if only I try harder than I to believe, then I will believe. Um, which I don't know if you've you know, tried to like build up your faith, right? Like I want to believe more. Um, it's one thing to cry out to the Lord to say strengthen my faith or give me faith. Right. Don't, I mean, I guess hmm. he enables us mm-hmm. to read the Bible mm-hmm. the word, go to church, listen to his word, receive the sacraments, mm-hmm. and we want to continue to do that. Mm-hmm. Correct. So what's the conflict? The con- it's not us doing it. It's him. Well, the, the conflict it's probably, serious. yeah, no, I think you're right. The conflict is probably what is faith, actually. That's probably where the confusion lies. Is faith like a capacity or a strength of oneself to believe? So either you got, you know, like George Michael, which I can use with you because you probably know that reference. The kids don't know George Michael anymore. It's really sad. You know, you just got to have faith, 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 faith. Faith in what? Faith for what? Where does it come from? How do I get it? These are all questions, right? Um, by definition from the Bible, faith does not come from you. It's not something that you can create. It's not something you can build up. It's not something that um, is a substance that you um, have hold of. It's, it's something that's given to you, that's strengthened by God, by his giving, right? It's nurtured and sustained by his spirit. And yes, it dwells in you, but not by your doing. And actually, to take the Bible seriously, just read Romans 3, for example. You work your whole life, your flesh in particular, is working against faith. So rather than having the capacity to believe, you actually, by birth, are inherently opposed to it and fight against it. So you can think of like, um, was he a centurion? I can't even remember. Sometime I should go back and look it up. You know, the man who said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. You know, and there's a conflict there. What's that? There's a name for him in the Bible? But there's a title. I think he's a centurion or he's a soldier or something. Yeah. You know, Lord, I believe, right, by giving. You've, you've spoken your word to me and now I believe and yet help my unbelief. Yet I'm still, I'm still fighting against that. That's the story with Nicodemus too. Like it's clear there's a conflict going on. He's like, I see that you are, you, you're doing signs that only God could do. And there's people saying you come in the name of God like a prophet. But I also don't believe everything you're saying. So I, I have reason to believe, but I don't really believe. And so, and the only way out of that is for God to speak to you over and over and over in his spirit to continually work and renew faith in you, right? Which is why the, the ongoing regular reception of the word of the sacraments and these things, not only are, do they come from faith, so you desire to come and receive them, but they're given for faith too, so you want, you, you, because you believe, you want to hear God's word. But by hearing God's word, you want to, then you believe. Does this make sense? You're shaking your head. It's, it's the word that created the faith that, that, that you desire God and his gifts. But it's also the gifts then that renew and, and strengthen the desire to receive them again. So by receiving, you want to receive again. But this is why if you, if you cut yourself off, it, this is my experience anyway. I don't know if this is yours. But if I miss church for a couple of weeks, this is before I was a pastor. But if I miss for a couple of weeks, then I'd be like, well, whatever. You know, I, it's not like absence made the heart grow fonder, but absence, actually absence just kind of the flame, just kind of, if you want to use that analogy, it does. And then it's almost like awkward when you come back. Because you're like. You guys are funny. I miss church so much right now. But I'm not coming today. To work. <laughs> You're denying the work of the Spirit. 
Yeah. But you're 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 receiving the work of your employer. Okay. <laughs> that was a joke. It wasn't very funny. Thank you. Um, but and this is this is a lot of times these kind of negating grammar words are very important. I just keep track of time. But the Holy Spirit has called me how by the gospel. All right. So so this is where this paradox happens. The Holy Spirit says. Jesus Christ was incarnate, born, uh, preached and taught, suffered and died to forgive you your sins. And this is a free gift to you received now in the, in the word proclaimed and in, in the sacraments administered. He says that to you. And yet you're like, well, why do I want that? Why do I need that? Right? I say, well, you're a sinner. Let me tell you more about that. I'm like, hmm, I don't really agree with you. <laughs> I seem like a pretty good person. Right? You can see how this goes. So the word that calls you is also the word that has to keep working on you. Uh, and this is always a challenge for us because we're like, um, we think, and this is in the sermon a little bit, we think that we have to like gussy up or dress up Jesus to make him more presentable and more acceptable and more, you know, more interesting or, you know, less offensive sometimes or whatever it is, right? That he doesn't care what you think about him? He just tells you what is what is. He does care what you think about him, but he gives you the faith so that you actually receive him in the way that he wants to be received. Yeah. Yeah, he was a rebel. That's fair. Yeah, the rat. What do you say? To some, but kind of like people think about Nickelback. That's fair. Or Creed. Or Creed. It's, it's okay. You don't have to get it. That's not actually a great example. Yeah, that's actually, well, that's a dated reference too. The kids don't get that one either. The idea, um, so, that, so maybe this is a good way to think about it, is to say uh, Jesus doesn't, um, doesn't conform to you so that you are, so that he becomes like you but rather he conforms you to him so that you become more like him, right? So that you understand the world the way he does, that you, um, that you live you know, in, in the fear and love of, of the Father the way that he does, right? So that's, that's a little challenging, right? Because it's, it's almost like Jesus is out here and you're down here and you have to get there. But he does come to you though, that's the problem. But he comes to you not to be, he does, and he does come being like you too, right? He's made man. So this analogy doesn't work out perfectly. But, um, but there is that conflict. I guess that's the way to put it. It's like between us, who we are, and what we think, and who Jesus is, and what he, what he says. Right? And that, and that conflict is interesting for Dasha. So you're like, I want to know more. Tell me, like, I'm, I see that I'm not quite on the same page as Jesus, and I want to know like, and that's, then that's where the spirit works through the word is conformity is generally for a nineties Gen Xer is kind of a bad, bad thing. You weren't supposed to be a conformist, you know, fight the system, you know, or if you're date, you want a more dated reference, you know, fight the man anyway. Right. I, I trying to spare you more offensive language. The, uh, what did I bring that up? Oh, but conformity to, to Christ, because, because actually we were made in his image at creation, right? We were made in the image of God, and, and the image of God is manifest to us in his son, Jesus. So, so what, what the Spirit is always at work doing through the word, through baptism, through forgiveness, through the supper, is to, re, to restore us to that, not only relationship, but image, so that our lives, now in, now in part, but then fully, as Paul would say, um, are like Jesus's. And that's a good thing. So then that conflict is resolved, but finally not until the death and resurrection, our death and resurrection. Make sense? So yeah, there is a conflict, but it's not, so the word that calls you to the spirit is not one that says you're, you know, Jesus is just like you in every way with, he flies his rainbow flag too, like you like to do or something, right? I don't know if you do, but, um, no, he, he doesn't accept you the way you are. That's actually the, the brilliance of the gospel is God doesn't accept you the way you are, but he actually redeems you. He saves you from who you are. 
which is that's the good news is that you're saved from the loss of the flesh from yourself yeah yeah which not everybody wants to be saved from themselves people like to some you know i won't i don't want to i don't want to die i don't want to have to i don't want to be different i don't want to have to change so there's a little bit of a paradox there um enlighten me so you were in darkness that's implied right you were in darkness but now you're in light that's john 1 with his gifts. So that's word, sacrament, all of it. Baptism, Lord's Supper, the whole deal. Opens your eyes, if you like. You're enlightened. Or the light bulb goes off. Now you, now you begin to understand. Or I shouldn't say understand. Yeah, understand is okay. Believe. Understand and believe are kind of the same idea. If you understand, understand. <laughs> to, be, to be put under. So the Holy Spirit brings you under the word of God. Under Jesus. So that you stand under him. Right? He is above, you are below. But that's good, right? Because he is the head and you are the body, as he says. So, enlightenment. Your light bulb goes off. And I'm like, huh, that's my problem. Right? That kind of thing. Oh, and that's who you are. And that's why you died. I get it now, I guess. Sanctified, which is a word that we need to probably define. Uh, it could be holified, if you like, to be made holy. Uh, the way I like to define this, and this is from the Old Testament, from Leviticus in particular, is to be set apart by God for his good use. That's, kind of, that's the kind of the working definition you can get by of holy from Leviticus, from the Old Testament book, which is largely about holiness and what makes one holy. So to be sanctified is to be set apart by God. So he takes you out of the world so that now you would say, I'm in the world, but not of the world. Right? Because you're given new life and you're made, you're made new. So now it isn't that you're different than the people around you and that you're still in the flesh and you still struggle with the same things. You still have the same temptations, etc. And yet now you have a savior and you have forgiveness, which makes you different. And the kingdom of God dwells in you by faith. So you're part of another kingdom. You live a double existence, if, if you like. Right? Sorry if this is a little too heady for you, but we're packing a lot in in a short period of time. Uh, and then kept me in the true faith. So that's what we were talking about. How does the Holy Spirit keep you in the faith? By wait, opening up your eyes again with the gifts, right? Bringing you back to the gospel, to the word preached, setting you apart from the world, which is why you set apart a few hours on Sunday to, to hear God's word at least, if not, you know, each day for prayer. All right. In the same way, he calls. So it's the same verbs again. Remember, called and then calls enlightened enlightens sanctifies sanct or sanctified sanctifies the whole christian church on earth and keeps it kept with jesus christ in the one true faith so this gift that the spirit gives to set you apart by his word to make you god's own um, is not just for you but you believe is given to the whole christian church on earth notice it doesn't say the whole lutheran church on earth <laughs> or um it could say the whole Catholic Church, which is probably, that would be fair if you understood Catholic as not the, the church that, you know, um, serves under Rome and under the, the Pope of Rome, but rather church as in, uni Catholic as in universal, which is how we'll say it today in the mm -hmm. Athanasian Creed. And the Catholic faith is this, that we which always bugs people on. There's another reason to say it more than once a year so that we can explain what we mean by, what, what is actually meant by the word Catholic more than once. Not the brand name Catholic, but the, the actual doctrinal word Catholic, which means universal. There's probably a footnote on there somewhere. No, it doesn't give you a footnote here. It does. Oh yeah, the one. Today we'll have it. Uh, in this Christian church, and then here's the key, he daily, the spirit, daily, and richly, that's nice, you know, with lots, forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. All right, so what's the, purpose, what's the purpose of all the things the Holy Spirit does? That is to bring you into the church and into the communion of the saints is to give you the forgiveness of your sins. Right? Every day. It's the only way to live, actually. is to die to sins and rise to faith in Christ. Each day these sounds resurrection of the body and life everlasting so the same here luther says on the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in christ this is most certainly true so 
you know, sometimes people um, get confused about the Holy Spirit and thinking, you know, there's like weird, like special gifts, you know, snake handling or something is a spiritual gift. Um, the Bible says that this is the work of the Spirit, is to bring you to the church, to keep you in the church, to continually set you apart by the gifts you receive in the church, right? And what was the one I missed? Well, yeah, ultimately, so because those gifts give forgiveness in Jesus. And being forgiven, then, you have the promise of resurrection and eternal life, right? Which is the only, it's, it's the only source of hope, actually, that lasts. I mean, I don't know, you can put your hope in, I don't know, it doesn't matter, matter uh, uh, Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump or RFK Jr. or uh, Joe Biden or whoever it is. These people are, these, yeah, these men, they're all white men, too. Interesting. Weird. Weird. I don't know. Um, how are we not? We, I thought we were supposed to notice these things now. Oh, well. Anyway, um, the, one of these guys is going to save us from like pending catastrophe, economic or otherwise, or war or something. It's like, um, one, you're naive. I don't know. Just pay attention to the history of the world. And two, um, that's not actually the, the salvation that's most important. So it doesn't mean you can't be politically active and work towards those things, but recognize it's kind of secondary actually to what, what does God say about me and what promise do I have that whatever kills me, whether it's at my own hands or the hands of others, right? Something is going to finally, you know, death is going to come for me because of my sin. But what has God done about that already in Jesus, right? Uh, we don't welcome death in the way, you know, like, let's have war, because that'll be fun, then we can all die and go to heaven. Like, no, <laughs> right? Um, so we're not, whatever you call that, suicidal, I guess. But on the other hand, we do want to have that answer, because then, then, then we can just keep moving. So we can say, like, today, if the Lord has work for me to do, and he gives me life, keeps, keeps me living, great, right? Because I don't need to worry about it. Or if today is death for me, I don't need to worry about that either, Right? because it's already been answered for, taken care of. So living daily in the forgiveness of sins and the promise then of resurrection and life everlasting, then you can keep putting one foot in front of the other and just keep doing things because you're not like, the salvation question is answered, but you need to hear that. You need to receive that. Otherwise, you, you know, you'll slip away from that. And you'll start putting faith, hope, and trust in yourself and then things don't go well. You know what I did not do? You service in 10 minutes. I did, and I also did not reprogram the bells. So ye old bells are going to start ringing. At nine? No. Yeah. Yes, at nine when church starts. <laughs> There's always something, right? When you change schedule. Um, look at the, the sign that's on 57 that has our church. It's changed. It has changed. Okay. That's it. Church time. That was the Holy Spirit. What's next? Lord's Prayer is next, okay? Lord's Prayer.